everybody, my name is Cathy Lamb and as you can probably tell, I am an organist. Now I'm going to talk to you about performance etiquette for the organ and I think the first place to start is actually in planning your programme. Now we might be talking about you might be playing one piece as part of a bigger recital but if you're thinking about your own recital say for a half an hour I would definitely think about how you um, construct that. Um, I think as organists quite often we're a breed that like quite avant-garde music so always think about what your audience might enjoy. Remember quite a lot of people are not organ aficionados so maybe start with something short and loud and exciting which just draws the listener in and then you can have your meat in the middle of the program and that may be something that might be a bit more challenging and then finish with something uh, sort of fancy at the end and you might then balance that out with a couple of small um, quieter pieces in between the two the big meaty chunk in the middle that's quite a nice way of constructing your programme. It's really important that you construct a programme well. Uh, it doesn't want to be too long. You don't want to have just one big chunky item, although sometimes we might play a whole VN symphony or something like that. Um, but uh, I think often a, a variety is a good idea. And remember, we as organists like to play loudly, but again, think about your volume control across the space of a programme because uh, people don't like to be completely bombarded all of the time even though we might like it so that's probably your starting point now once you actually get to the program i suggest it's always a good idea to speak to your audience um, and uh, you need to do this as best you can i would say without uh without sort of written notes you might have a few pointers i've got a few pointers in front of me here just to remember what i'm about to tell you um and i would always suggest that although it's really great to have um some sort of academic interest in the pieces it's also really lovely to have some sort of personal anecdote why do you like the piece um why can you connect to it and that's really important and if you've decided to play something that's a little more, more challenging tell the audience that that's what you've done that they may struggle with this particular piece it's hard because it's hard to listen to because it's dissonant here or point these things out because you just want to get your audience on side as best you can and hopefully it'll relax them and it'll also relax you i hope uh, public speaking is uh, one of those things, isn't it? We all, I always get told off for talking too fast. Uh, so do practice these things. Um, think about your eye level. Remember, if your eye level is dropped, that, um, that often you look unconfident. You need to have that sort of sense of confidence and always smile, okay, and enjoy yourself, okay? Because that will convey itself to your audience. When you then get to playing, remember don't rush okay the organ is one of those things where you've got a lot to sort out okay so you need to make sure that you've got your registration is the box in the right place all of these things take time and the trouble is when you've got a whole audience watching you time feels like it's going so very slowly be brave and hold your nerve um, i remember once i played a recital it was the inaugural recital of a an electronic instrument when i was very young and the electronic instrument in the middle of a big toccata decided to uh, cut out and I had to turn it back on and keep going. To me, that felt like an eternity. And actually, I've since listened back to a recording of that performance and you'd hardly know that the organ switched off. Time does for you stand still. But just remember, take your time, poise yourself, and then off you go. Now, when you're playing, we can get really stressed, can't we, about little slips, little mistakes, and uh, things that go wrong. But a performance, particularly a live performance, that's the excitement about it. Things can change. You might do something completely differently to how you intended it. Just try and enjoy yourself. Remember, music is about communicating and uh, communicating with your audience. They're not gonna know all the time when you've played a mistake. So just be brave again and try and enjoy it, okay? Because the moment has gone. Don't get stuck in those horrible moments because that often then leads to, to worse ones as you go on. Also, if you do make a mistake, don't huff and puff and pay, pull funny faces because as I said before, quite often, no one will know that something's gone wrong. But if you point it out in a grimace or something, then that obviously tenses you up. It also tenses your audience up, okay? And remember, it shows that you're not then enjoying yourself. So do try as best you can to uh, get rid of those moments where we grunt and groan, save those for the rehearsal room. 
Now, when you get to the end of your piece, don't forget, particularly if you're in a big acoustic, that your, uh, your building, your acoustic is your best stop, okay? So when you get to the end of a piece, don't just sort of throw yourself off and walk off, yeah? Hold the silence for a minute and then relax because you want to hold that atmosphere. You want people to bathe in it, okay? Just at the end. So don't, don't be quick to finish because again, uh, you can sort of give the impression, oh, I don't care, done, oh, I'm off, yeah, all that kind of thing. So don't rush at the end. Obviously acknowledge your audience. The amount of people that don't want to acknowledge their audience, particularly if I judge sort of younger competitions, it's like, oh, I don't want to bow, please let me run off and hide. Um, but remember that they've come to watch you, they've come to support you, often they've come paid to do this, that. So make sure that uh, you do acknowledge them. So at the end, come off, give really happy smile, again, confident posture and a good bow, okay? And then obviously you have to judge how many times you're gonna do that, okay? If the clapping's disappearing, don't force more bows. Um, and never be offended by that. Often in organ recitals, we don't have massive audiences, so you're not gonna get four or five curtain calls um, and that's just the way it is. Um, do you judge again things like an encore? If you um, if you get the sense that people want one, great. It's always tr tricky if you've been asked to prepare one, and then you kind of get that sense that people may just be wanting to go. Don't ever be offended by that. It's it's a tricky one to judge, but again, do judge it. Don't just decide that's what you're going to do and go with it. Do try and judge the atmosphere. And then I would suggest, if you possibly can, do stick around and try and talk to the audience at the end. We as organists, we're a sort of rare breed um, and uh, we always need to strive to try and make people want to come back to our recitals because it's not necessarily something that's everybody's cup of tea. You might find that you've got somebody in the audience who's never been to an organ recital before. And actually, um, the trouble with um, a, a reputation for organists is often that, you know, we're stuck up in our lofts and very, very, um, we don't really want to talk to anybody. Um, and let's, let's get rid of that reputation and let's make people realise that it's a really, really fabulous instrument uh, and they need to go to every Every organ recital they possibly can. So good luck with it all um, and I hope those points are useful. Take care, bye!